What can I do to rid myself of under eye bags that I got genetically? I'm only 21. My mother and I both have bags underneath our eyes. Hers are much more noticeable. She has been struggling for years to find a solution, and I want to do anything I can to prevent mine from becoming that bad when I get older. What non-surgical treatment would you recommend for both of us? Thank you for your question. You submitted two photos, one of yourself and your mother, and you state that you are, you are dealing with under eye bags that are genetically caused, and you are looking for a non-surgical solution to uh, prevent your under eye area from looking like your mother's, um, and you've submitted two very good photos to help uh, illustrate your concern. So certainly I can give you some guidance about the issues related to under eye bags. Um, a little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and helping people with the aesthetics around their eyes is a big part of what I do in my day-to-day -day practice. So when I look at the photos you submitted, I have to at least break down a little bit of what you are describing as under eye bags. So where I typically look when someone questions me about having under eye bags, it's usually in an area that's above the bone structure of the rim where the eyes would look puffy and have large pockets which are typically referred to as lower eyelid fat prolapse. In your situation, in the photo you submitted of your mother, I don't see those things. What I believe you're probably referring to is actually the area from the, uh, right before, below the eyelid margin where the, the eye, eyelid skin appears to bunch a little bit, especially when you smile. And very often people do come in and refer to that area as under eye bags. The differentiation between your that this area for you and your mother is that for your mother it appears to be a little bit more prominent and you see a few more lines. So in terms of management in this area it's very important to first understand what is the basis for uh, this concern. Well if it's when you are smiling or even when baseline when you're not smiling there's a little bit of a ridge there that ridge represents a muscle called the orbicularis oculi muscle. And this is a muscle that's important for the support of the lower eyelid. In general, this is not something that really responds well to uh, most non-surgical options. Uh, and the definitive one or the most common or popular one being the injection of a neurotoxin like Botox or Diceport. What that's doing is to relax the muscle slightly so that the muscle doesn't bunch. Basically when you smile the orbicularis oculi muscle contracts and when it contracts it causes a ridge to form. So it is possible to put something like micro Botox or sm a very small number of units of Botox in your mother's situation uh, more than in yours. Now, there is also the opportunity sometimes to at least explore what the area below called the tear trough. And in this tear trough area, there may be a little bit of a contrast that we're not appreciating with the photos you submitted where it may look relatively hollow compared to the area just above it, which might have a slight degree of puffiness. Now, this tear trough area is, uh, is, is a relative hollow that can be addressed with the use of fillers such as Restylane um, or Juvederm or basically hyaluronic acid filler that can fill this area and we often combine that with something called platelet-rich plasma. Platelet-rich plasma is derived from your own blood and consists of a concentration of the wound healing and growth factors that are necessary when you have an injury or a wound. So what we're basically doing is we're trying to improve the tissue quality as well as the skin quality to help 
stimulate collagen, blood supply, and overall fill this area. Now, this, this, the, the solution would probably be more appropriate for your mother than would be for yourself. I realize that you're trying to do everything you can to try to prevent the aging process to be as significant for you, um, but un unfortunately, there is only so much you can do. Now, it doesn't mean that there are things you can, cannot, that, that you can do to take action, but it doesn't necessarily mean procedures. What I'm referring to is healthy lifestyle, avoiding excess sun exposure, eating a good diet, getting enough sleep, minimizing stressors. But otherwise, the genetics of aging, there is an opportunity, maybe when you're a little bit older, to do things such as platelet-rich plasma and fillers to try to minimize some of the signs of aging. However, I think it's a little bit early for you to do anything that's more invasive um, with, based on the photos you submitted. Now, if there is a level of dimensionality that's not being appreciated, certainly it's, it's, it, it is always valuable and beneficial to at least meet with a doctor who can guide you and your mother about options. It is not unusual for me in my practice to take care of people for sev in, in several generations um, because of this genetic tendency to have this, these types of issues. But at the same time, it is also the role of your physician to guide you when to do something and what to do as well as what not to do. So meet with the doctors who you can feel comfortable with, learn about your options, understand the distinction, the anatomic issues as well as the strategies, and then figure out what is worth pursuing and what is worth deferring until later. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question.